He is the invisible image. I'm sorry, let me back up. Verse 15, he is the image of the invisible God. All right? The firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, both visible and invisible whether thrones or dominions, principalities and powers. And he's talking here about things that we can't even see, the spirit realm, um, which is revealed throughout Scripture, is there's spirits that minister that we can't see. All right? And, and it says, um, and, that, and there's both, that's where the, the, the struggle is. There's a struggle in uh, heaven where we are the prize all right man is mankind is god's crowning achievement of creation which we'll get to and there's a battle for our souls all right and god has conveyed us and made a way for us to escape uh the enemy camp all right and and that's through his blood and and faith in in what christ has done for us it says, and he, he is before all things, and in him all things consist. And he is the head, being Christ, of the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. All right? And it says in verse 19, for it pleased the Father, and this is kind of the, the whole crux of uh, Christianity, and it says, For it pleased the Father that in him all fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. And you who were once alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now you have re been reconciled in the body of his flesh through death, to present you holy and blameless. And that's what took place on the cross. What happened on the cross of Christ was Jesus, the sinless, perfect human being, exchanged his perfection, his sinlessness, and he took on our sinfulness, our exceedingly sinfulness, and made the great exchange. He took on our sin. He who knew no sin became sin for us that we might live with him. And that's how he made peace. That's how he made peace. And what we'll get into uh, these things in more detail as we go through the, uh, the study. And it says, um, to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight, if indeed you continue in faith and are grounded and steadfast, and not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you have heard and which we preach. And, and it, what you need to know in all of that is it all comes down to the Word of God. And some, some notes, I'm going to go to my notes so we don't have to jump around and, and read so much, but what I want to do is I want to sew home, I want to bang home why we can, um, you know, trust God's Word. All right? It's a historical account of history, the Bible, all right? It has scientific facts, and we have an article up on a website called 101 Scientific Facts. Uh, it was done by Eternal Productions. It's awesome. This is not a science textbook, but it has scientific facts that science has been behind thousands of years and is just now beginning to uh, understand. Okay, um, it's trustworthy. We can, we can trust that it's a historical account of, of people like Noah, Adam. These are not mythical uh, figures. These are not figures of history for teaching good moral values. Um, these are actual people who actually lived. Um, if Jesus speaks of uh, Noah, in other things, and he, he makes comments as it was in the days of Noah, when Adam did this, in Adam all die, but in Christ all live. And if you don't receive that, and if you don't accept that, you don't accept the Word of God. And you really don't have any right, you know, spending 
and calling yourself a Christian. You don't, right? In John chapter 5, it talks about what do we do? The, the, the people came to him and they're like, how do we, you know, what, they, were, they were marveling at the, the good works and the healings that the Lord was doing. And they say, what do we do that we might do the works of, of God? And Jesus said, believe on him, being Jesus, on whom he sent. So he's telling us, for us to do the will of God, he says, believe me. Now that's what we call faith. And a lot of times faith flies in the face of what the world is telling us. But this world is controlled and this world represents a um, spiritual darkness. There's all kinds of spiritual um, counterfeits out there masquerading as uh, enlightening people. But you know, Jesus said, if that light that is in you, being that spiritual discipline, whatever it is, he goes, is darkness. He goes, how great is that darkness? Because that's deception, thinking that it's, it's light and it's not, it's darkness. Jesus is our creator, all right? And because he's our creator, he cares for us. He is the one who gave us the word of God. He gives us a historical account of what's happening uh, in the world today. And, and what went wrong, really? Um, we talked about salvation. All right. Let's go over to uh, 2 Peter chapter 1 and establish um, faith here. And it says um, the Apostle Peter, and I want you to note right here that the Apostle Peter, when he wrote this, this was his final swan song. He lived his life. He, he, he was there during the earthly ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. He saw him crucified. He denied him. Uh, he was restored. G a study of Peter is a wonderful uh, example of um, restoration, um, courage, failure, and restoration again. And, uh, but in all of that, Peter... The last thing he wants to tell us is about God's word, all right? He, he, he wants to let us know the trustworthiness of it, growing in faith in it, and then he gives warning of both false prophets and false teachers because the enemy knows that if he masquerade as a uh, prophet or a teacher, that he can lead people astray and bring those uh, God's flock and destroy them. All right, so in, in Peter, 2 Peter, verse 1, it says, Simon Peter, a bondservant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith, that's us, by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now that right there is called a, a Henedes modifier, and it, so when you see where it says God and Savior, that God is the subject, and the second part intensifies that for his and Savior Jesus Christ. All the way through like Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 43 says, there is no God but me and no other Savior. There is none, no one else. And if you go through Isaiah's chapters 40 through 49, that's called the trial of the false gods. 